Good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying that intro music. Uh, listening to those a cappella songs, I always wanted to be the guy with that low voice that could do that like oh, sound at the bottom. So I was listening to that thinking, man, I don't know if I'll ever get there, but that was that was super cool. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day today. It is certainly spring and you have certainly made a good choice to join us here at the Green Lake online service. We're so happy you have joined us. My name is Scott Callender. I'm a host here for uh, the church service and we are thrilled to have you with us. And we're going to start things off today with a prelude of um, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing with Wanda Griffiths. We'll start that now. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. That was beautiful. And again, welcome to everyone who's joining us on the internet and joining us here for our online church service today. My name's Scott Callender, and I'm going to be the host today, saying hello to you all and uh, welcoming you and hopefully giving you a little shot of joy for your day. Um, Martin Luther wrote, uh, our Lord has written the promise of resurrection, not in books alone, but uh, in every leaf of springtime. And I think that quote today really rings true as I look outside and see all the new buds coming up. And uh, I hope that you're feeling um, the, the power of resurrection this morning with spring coming on. So the first thing that we're going to be doing today here is just sharing some birthdays. So uh, the first set of little birthdays here, um, Marlene Land is having a birthday this week. And Marlene, I, I miss discussing rhythms with you in the junior choir and talking about how we can, we can find the right rhythm to, to make uh, everything come together. And I'm, I'm hoping to do that again with you sometime here soon. Uh, Matilda Raja uh, is also her birthday this week. And Matilda, I mean, your Indian food that you cook, and I'm always sneaking in the back room at Potluck. I miss that a lot. Uh, hope, hope to have that again soon. Um, Diane Carlo also has a birthday this week, and we're really thinking of you on your birthday this week, Diane. 
Um, Ava Fio, uh, missing you running around at the church and also at softball games. Um, love, love spending time with your family out there at the softball field. Uh, Victoria Ramos almost ha also has a birthday this week, and uh, we we love spending time with you and playing piano, hearing you play the piano, and uh, we just hope you have a really beautiful birthday this week. And now I'm going to kick it over to Wanda for some more birthdays. Thank you, Scott. Uh, yes, birthdays today that I get to give out. Uh, the first one is to one of our young people, Christopher Fum, and we wish you a wonderful birthday this week. And then we go to, oh, there's somebody here. I'm not, I, I'm going to say happy birthday to him anyway, but I'm not sure who it is. Scott Callender. Um, you may have seen him around. I hear he's a YouTube star and uh, very much in demand online. But anyway, happy birthday to you, Scott. Uh, and then Chris Reynolds, I'm missing you in choir and hope that at some point when we're back in the space, we'll be able to see you again. Enjoy having you in the soprano section and uh, Mitch coming with you to rehearsals as support, which is just lovely having someone listening. And then Michelle Talavera, I miss seeing you. And uh, I remember when your children were very young and we often interacted at different places and times. So good, good, happy birthday to Michelle this week. And now I think it's time to go back to that internet star, Scott Callender for some more announcements. Wow, Wanda, hard, hard to follow up, but uh, I'll try, I'll try now. Uh, so I have a few announcements to share with you all. So the first one is that next week is going to be our homeless feed that happens here near Lake City, very close to where I am. And the information's in your bulletin and Selena prefers that you sign up so she has an understanding of who's coming and what they're bringing. So um, there is information in the bulletin on how to sign up and it's a, a wonderful program that we really encourage people to be involved with. So that's coming up next week. Uh, um, next Sabbath. Um, the other thing to share is that we're not having a sort of traditional spring lecture series this this year, but we are going to have a series on the theme Kingdom Come. And there will be four different sermons that happen each week in May um, that will be covering a different aspect of the idea of Kingdom Come. So something very cool to look forward to as well. And there's, of course, always going to be more information about that in the bulletin and upcoming in the next few weeks. Um, so the other thing that I need to share with you is the introduction of the speaker. And the speaker this week is um, Eric Raja. So uh, brother of, or yes, yeah, brother, uh, I believe of Elmo. Um, and so he's coming to us this week. He is uh, an owner of a software company called Advanced Systems. Um, and then he's also created a foundation called A Better World. And A Better World uh, has helped um, uh, all kinds of different sustainable projects in different countries, 14 different countries around the world. Uh, 2,600 people have signed on to help and their whole idea is creating sustainable futures for people through ministry. And he's going to be sharing with us today a little bit about his idea of having ministry while also being a business owner. So we're really looking forward to, to hearing more about that and learning a little bit more about Eric. Um, so Wanda, I'm going to send it over to you for some more notes on the service. Thank you, Scott. Uh, this morning's music, we're going to be blessed for the offering time by a duet um, with Alex and Andrew. So Andrew Gaju on cello and his father, Alex Gaju, accompanying on piano um, in recorded in the space. I think it was recorded last fall or last summer. One of the very odd but sort of wonderful things about this time is that we can have music being shared even though people are physically distanced. Uh, I believe Andrew is back east at school right now, but we can enjoy his music uh, that they created for us a little while ago. And then for the anthem spot, we are going to hear a new recording by the junior choir. So this is a virtual choral piece where everyone records their um, their part individually and then sends it to Gumi, our wonderful editor, who turns it into a magical, beautiful performance. We have Lisey Case accompanying on piano and Shelley Grown has, Legrone has directed all of these people. Um, and so it'll be a delight to see our children's faces in the, in the current day instead of a video from a couple of years ago. And then I think the I, that's the main thing to tell you. And we are ready to move to hymn number one, Praise to the Lord the Almighty for our opening hymn.
Please bow your heads with me for the invocation. Most Holy Lord, thank you for calling us together to worship today. Thank you for sending your resurrection message through the blooms and spring. Send your power and wisdom to be shared through the participants in our worship service. Grant us your grace and your peace and empower us to gather a renewed sense of comfort and life today for the week ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The money collected in today's offering goes to support local church ministries. I encourage you to give generously as your means allow. And I'd like to ask you to bow your heads in a word of prayer. Father, we know that no matter what our current resources, all of what we have comes from you. You are the great and generous giver. And we ask that you would touch our hearts as we follow your example. We ask that you would place your blessing on the offering collected today, that it might be effective in advancing your work in our local community. Amen.
Hello, welcome dear friends. Today we'll be traveling with Lynn. Really quick trip. It will be where these beautiful flowers grown up in Skagit Valley. Yes, it's a quick trip that you can have like 45 minutes depending where you live or maybe two hours. But yes, it's just a gorgeous one. So Skagit Valley on April is known by the Tulip Festival town. And it's just amazing to see how beautiful tulips in many different colors you can find. I'm going to tell you the way I just grown up these tulips and how they are, how they behave. Well, on January, I choose the date to do this plantation. And they come in a bulb. They don't come in a seed. It's like a big bulb or a medium bulb. And then you plant them at for the frosting time. And for you water them and just care about them, they will be a start blooming around mid spring and it will be gorgeous as you see it right here. So one thing that I just observed, it was that they go to sleep the same way we do. When the sunset comes down, they go to sleep, which is means that you see them right now so blooming at sunset they close they close beautifully and the next day they start opening opening and as you see just full open another thing is that they long last only two weeks at for they just full bloom so in a Skagit Valley at the beginning of the April they start blooming so at for that they full bloom and they long last only two weeks so if you want to see the beautiful tulips as you see right here in my yard in tulip town at Skagit you will find a ton and many different colors so you can take beautiful pictures you go to their farmers you go to their nurseries and you can learn more how to grow these beautiful plants and flowers so Next time, we're going to join us to another place. But this one, it was a quick trip to Skagit Valley right here. I'm in my yard, but I will invite you to go to the Tulip Town. See you next time on Traveling with Lean. Please pray with me. Father, Thank you for bringing us together today. On this Sabbath day, we are blessed with rest and community, one pulse in a rhythm of blessing that stands in contrast to the stress and uncertainty that too often follows us through the rest of the week. Most of us have faced challenges this week, some of us more than others. And we thank you that we can share this moment together, even just digitally, in rest and worship. Some of us are facing new seasons of hope, and for this we are thankful. In these first weeks of spring, we are blessed by the renewal that we see in nature. We are blessed by the rollout of vaccines and by the hope that the encapsulation and isolation that all of us have felt at some point in the last year will one day be a thing of the past. We are blessed by the Easter season, by the promise and the hope that you have defeated death. Many of us have our own reasons to be thankful, personal, professional, academic, relational. And we as a church community offer gratitude for these things to you as well. We pray also for those of us whose situations make hope more difficult to imagine. Some of us face personal and professional frustrations. Some are dealing with financial or health problems. Others fight with loss, heartbreak, or despair. We pray for your comfort and for your help. Be with us and help us also to be there for each other. Lead us to see 
and to respond to the needs in our community. We draw several names especially to your attention. We pray that you be with Becky Meacham's sister, be with Davy Reed, be with Diane Carlisle. Be with the Green Lake Church child care and preschool workers. Be with Joanne McGale and with Linda Heap. Be with Mary Churchill and with Nola Jean Bamberry. Be with the family whose child is involved with drugs. Be with Quinlan Wilbur. We thank you for hearing our prayer. Be with us for this service, for this Sabbath, and as we go forward into a new week. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs 29, verse 7. Der Gerechte ist bedacht auf den Rechtsanspruch der Geringen. Der Gottlose versteht sich nicht auf Erkenntnis. The godly care about the rights of the poor, the wicked don't care at all. The New Testament reading is from Matthew 25, verses 34 through 45. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? 
or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry? or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. May the Lord bless the hearing of the word. Thank you for your invitation to share with you. I do have deep connections to this church. My brother Elmo and his family attend here. I'm very good friends with uh, the sister of Dana, Dr. Denise Hu, who lives in my community, and we do a number of projects together. And I have been following Pastor John as well. He was introduced to me by my English teacher in college, Bev Matiko. So I'm delighted to be here to share this time with you. The question I want to ask you today is, are you called? And I'm sure you have heard this statement before, where people are called. And this is a question I struggled with when we arrived in Canada and I attended high school. Shortly after, I graduated from high school and went on to university in British Columbia. While I was taking business, some people from my church convinced me that I should become a pastor. That was the furthest thing on my mind. I always wanted to be in business. But the urge and their encouragement was so great that I was at a crossroad. I did not know which way to turn, whether to follow what I believed to be a calling from God or whether I should be following what I thought I wanted to do in life. I arrived at CUC in Lacombe to take religious studies. Time went by very quickly, and soon it was graduation. There I was seated with my classmates. I was very disappointed because I did not know why I had come, and soon my name would be called. And I was already told that I wouldn't have a job as a pastor. Something happened a few months before my graduation that made me feel this way on the day of my graduation. As I went up to receive my diploma, what happened a few months ago would continually be played in my mind. My professor at that time, Dr. Warren Trenchard, who still remains to me a very close friend, asked some of us to stay behind after class. And he pointed to a few of us and he said, I want to tell you that about a dozen of you will not get jobs as pastors. And immediately an argument broke out in class the students arguing with the teacher that they were called by God to be ministers, 
And who was he as a professor to tell us that we did not have the call? Well, the argument got quite heated and the class had to be dismissed. And Dr. Trenchard said to us, you're welcome to come and talk to me. Because Dr. Trenchard was my advisor and friend, I decided to go and talk to him. And I don't remember much about our conversation 40 some years ago, but I do remember these words just like it had happened yesterday. He said, everyone is called to ministry. Everyone is called to serve. It might not be on the pulpit. It might not be an evangelist or a preacher, but each one of us are called to serve. That's the idea that I want to develop with you today. Many years went by. I went into business after I graduated and the computer business was quite then at that time doing quite well. And I decided that someday I would want to do something. So sitting in the corner, as I always did in my church, I was thinking about what that calling would look like to me. I envisioned a world without poverty, without injustice, without inequality. A world where there would be peace and where people would not suffer. It was a very idealistic kind of an outlook that I had. Nevertheless, I convinced some of my friends to help start a better world. I went to the church and I asked them permission to do this. And lo and behold, an elderly person stood up and said, this is not what the church should be doing. The church is there to proclaim the gospel. We are not in the business of helping and serving. When I was 30 years old, that was a bit shocking to think that the church wouldn't see it this way. But nevertheless, the pastor was very supportive and invited us back to come and propose and promise that we wouldn't raise and ask for more than $5,000 a year to make this world a better place. So don't let situations like this stop you from your dreams because we are all called to serve. Creating this better world meant to me fulfilling Matthew chapter 25 that was read for us today. We started building schools, putting children in schools. We rejoiced when we saw the children could get an education and be able to free themselves from poverty. We met people like Janet who had fallen into a fire and after a dozen surgeries, she was able to have a face reconstructed and eventually graduate from high school. And today, she's able to run a business. We are called to serve everyone. Sometimes you need to have a turning point in your life. I remember standing here at one of our projects and seeing Gloria crawl to school. This is how much she thirsted an education. As I stood there and watched Gloria go to school like this, that was a turning point, a turning point to commit oneself to serve. Everyone here needs to think about the turning point of a call to serve. As I traveled to see our projects, I saw children 
looking for water like this. And I remembered those verses in Matthew 25. I was thirsty and you gave me water to drink. So water projects got started. Many people joined us. Water turned into being able to feed the hungry by helping them to grow. A garden, much like you see this in some of our schools. We are called to serve in whatever capacity we can, whether it's overseas building an organization like this that I was fortunate to do or serving in your backyard. I remember meeting Becca when she was in grade six. I had gone to speak at her school. I didn't know her, but after I finished, she came over and she said, I have a small envelope for you. And when I went home and opened it, there was $40 with a note saying that she had won this in a competition at the school and felt that she could do something to make this world a better place. Some years ago, as she went through high school and then on to college, I saw her playing the violin at the farmer's market, raising money by playing her violin. Later on, as she went on to university, she joined an orchestra. That orchestra ended up raising over $100,000 to do various projects with a better world. Let young people have the opportunity to serve, encourage them, tell them that they have a calling, remove the barriers that they face when it comes to service. We are called to connect with others. In my community, that's a burden I had. How do I connect with people outside of my church family? And humanitarian causes are a great way to connect with people. They may not believe in our beliefs of Christianity or church, but people have good hearts and they are also called to serve. I was so fortunate to be able to travel with more than 2,000 people from our community, doctors, dentists, engineers, teachers, People from all walks of life joined us because we had a common belief of serving and connecting and making this world better. So figure out ways on how you can reach out to the community by engaging them in common causes. There's a physiotherapy team that has been working for many years bringing healing and mobility to hundreds of children, traveling every year. In fact, Ellen White said this, and my pastor often reminds me of this. And she said, mingle with people. Seek their good first before you invite them to follow you. Sometimes my pastor says that we read this backwards. We tell people to follow us, then we tell them everything else. But that's not what this says. Mingle, seek their good, then they will want to follow us. We are called to act. We are called to serve. We are called to connect. We are called to act. In fact, all the beliefs we have will not make any sense to the people around if we are not demonstrating and we are acting on our beliefs. This is a well-known story that we read about the goats and the sheep. They have similar problems. They both have memory problems. The goat people don't even see the obvious. They don't remember 
seeing people when they were hungry or thirsty. And the sheep, they don't remember either. They don't remember that they saw them, but they acted on them. Interestingly, if you see these verses, verses 37 and 44, the sheep and the goat have the same response. When did I see you hungry? When did I see you thirsty? When did I see you naked? There's one group that doesn't even see the obvious. And there's another group that sees but doesn't remember because that's the way they live their lives. They do their good every day without seeking attention. They don't even think of this as a kingdom issue. They remember the words of Jesus and follow his model of acting. It's much better to act and people will know who we are than to tell them who we are and what we believe without acting. So remember these words. Always seek out for the people that need you. Here is a quick summary of what Jesus was trying to say to us. You will see that it's important to act than to speak. Yes, we are called to serve, to connect, to act. When we started A Better World with $5,000, we had no idea how this would grow. We have helped over a million people to have better lives. And over $35 million have been raised mostly from people in the community who believed in the importance of service. Some time ago, I was in India and I wanted to go and see the home of Mother Teresa. Reading about her as a young person growing up and seeing her work, I wanted to go to her home. Of course, she had died and she lived here during her final years. Soon we were ushered to her room where she had spent the last little while. With me was uh, Elder Dan Jackson, recently retired as president of the North American Division. We had traveled together doing many different things in different countries and he had joined me on this trip. We were reading Mother Teresa's diaries that she would write every night after everybody had gone to sleep. She would open her diary and record things that had come her way during the day. And this particular moment she had written her job or her service work, work was to give her life to the people who were dying in the streets of Calcutta. And in her diary she wrote, even if I can take one person out of the ditch, clean them, and let them die with dignity, I would have followed the calling of God. So I'd like you to think about Mother Teresa, Jesus, and other people who lived their life in service. Yes, we are called to serve, to connect and to act much like Jesus did.
May we come to understand that we are here to serve. May we hear your voice and help you to give us a way that we can find to help others. May we come to see that the song is written on our heart. And as we live in tune with the song, in tune with the creator of the universe, may we realize that we are in a relationship with the living God. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, a reminder, if you are not getting our weekly updates on Thursdays, you can email glcsda at gmail.com and get put on the list. So all these links that we share with you and we tell you about, uh, you can click straight from the Thursday emails. Thank you so much again for joining us. We loved having you and we hope you get out and enjoy the sunshine today and we see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.